today the argument toilet seat up or down that'll be at the end we're gonna have chat gpt help us they're gonna help us with that one but other than that we're gonna be in proverbs 11 24 25 still talking about giving giving what happens you know we feel like i'm tired and I'm, I, I just can't give anymore but i want to show you today that when you step out and you continue to give there's a refreshing that happens mm. it's exciting we'll be right back Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. Pastor Jason. It's good to have you with us today. Looking good today. Yeah, Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yeah. And uh, if you're a new <laughs> subscriber, <laughs> type in where you're from. We like to read that on Wednesdays. The way you go. Yeah. I don't know. Let's watch this clip. There's no clip. Roll the clip, Stephen. All right. Let's close in prayer. You want to pray? There's no clip today? No, it's Tuesday. Uh I had eclipse on Tuesday. Proverbs 11, 24. What are you talking about? 11, 24, 25. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Now, that sounds weird in today's culture. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. Wow. Now, you can think about poverty as just not having enough. So you don't have enough joy. You don't have enough peace. You don't have, a, right? You don't have enough of the good stuff. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And I love the word refresh. I know, right? Right. Now, I know that, uh, so we teach on Wednesday nights, and every Wednesday night, Joy comes in, and she gives us both a bottle of water. Oh, she's so sweet. It's so refreshing. It is. It's nice and cold. It always just makes me happy. It does. It, right? Me too. I'm like, it just make, it kind of it brightens me up with a smile. Yeah. And she's just on it every week. And you can tell, as she brings us refresh, that she gets such a joy on her face. Yeah. It's refreshing back to her. It's true. Right? And same thing for your life. When you... You know, I, I think that we can get into uh, an attitude at a time where at, what's the opposite of refresh? Well, we suck Weary. the fresh, we suck the fresh out of people. <laughs> fresh vacuum. <laughs> we take the fresh. We're not like Ziploc. We should Ziploc our life where we keep the fresh in. We refresh. People. I think of it as weariness. Weariness right. is the opposite of being refreshed. Refreshed to me is like, like I'm renewed. I'm able to go again. Like it's it's like I woke up in the morning refreshed. Yes. You know, yesterday was hard, but I'm refreshed today after sleeping all night. So refreshing to me is the opposite of weariness. So when you come into the office, what what do you bring? Is it refreshing to be around you? Well, and I think too, like you identify the problem. I'm sick and tired of, and then finish that sentence. I'm sick right. and tired of. So you have weariness in that area of your life. Right. And the way out of that kind of weariness is to is to start giving into that. Right. I'm sick and tired of having to do everything around this house. We'll start doing it with a good attitude. Yeah. Just keep pouring in. Don't be sick and tired of it. Know that God is going to reward you. I'm sick and tired of, you know, I go to work and I get a thankless job and the boss never says thank you and nobody ever says, good. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Push past that moment. Don't give because you're waiting for some kind of return. Instead, there's a refreshing coming on the other side of persevering through this, right? It, it, and I, I find it myself that when I'm real tired, right, climb into bed and Holly's like, oh, I could blah, blah, blah. And I just go, I'm on it. What do you want? And it's so funny that a second ago I was like, I was like, I don't know if I can move to where God just, as I'm bringing refreshments to her, I'm being refreshed. Right. All of a sudden I got energy. Yep. You're refreshing back at the workplace. You you bring a positive attitude, even though everyone else is toxic. And, and you used to be weary. You were weary right. yesterday. But now you come in with a refreshed attitude and you begin to refresh others because out of that refreshing that's in you. And then what happens is you get refreshed. And it's backwards because the, the world makes you believe that if you're tired, then you need rest. Right. In a way. Does that make sense? I, obviously, if you're tired, you got to go to sleep. But... Tired means, hey, I got to do nothing for you. Well, I think tired a lot of times in, in the world today means quit. Yes. Right? I'm You're sick burnt and tired. Out. I'm burnt out. Right. That, that's a better word, burnt out. But burnout is nothing more than a lack of faithfulness. And faithfulness, oh, when, you think so of, when you think of faithfulness, you think of, well, you keep going. Mm -hmm. But really, you, you, the reason you keep going is because you stayed full of faith. You stayed full of and the belief that God has you here doing what you're doing. Faithful. I, if I believe that God has me here, I stay in faith that, that what I'm doing matters. I'm, I believe that this is part of my assignment. I believe that God gave me this job as a gift or gave me this family as a gift. I'm faithful. I stay full of the belief that what I'm doing matters and it's making an impact and it's valuable and it's God assigned. And that energizes me. I could actually run And then you just keep right going. Now. And you did an incredible teaching. But when you a couple lose months that, ago, you quit. 
you did a pre will teaching a couple months ago about that second wind comes. Yeah, I did a second wind teaching. It was, it was so good. Was maybe six months ago, yeah. Right. And that's the second wind comes when you push past the weariness. Yeah, right? r- runners know this to be true, marathon runners, that they get to the the threshold, the breaking point where the body just can't take another step. But if they keep stepping, all of a sudden, the chemical reaction happens in the body that completely changes where it's getting energy from. It starts to pull energy from new places mm-hmm. and you get refreshed and suddenly you, they call it a second wind because now you can go and you're not weary anymore. So you're trying to do things on your own physical ability of giving and you get weary, but God says, nope, step a little further and now supernaturally in the same way, I get a second wind from God. They will run and, and not, not grow, grow weary. weary. That's our promise right. from God. So you don't burn out as in from running. Well, I'm pastor. I'm just burned out in my marriage. I've just been going and going and going. I can't do it. No, burnout isn't from from going, from working hard. Lots of people work hard and don't ever quit and never gain burnout. No, no. Burnout is a result of, of I lost faith in what I was doing mattered or had any hope in it. Right. I lost faith in the fact that God can turn this thing around for me. I quit. And I think that one of the fastest ways for burnout is negative attitude. Oh, and sure. added, a negative attitude will suck the life out of your giving. Yeah, it's that lack of hope. Well, this is pointless. This is not going in. This is going nowhere. Right. It doesn't matter. Again, like I'm losing value that what I do is mattering at all or that it's God assigned. I, I treat everything that I do in life, everything that's in front of me as God assignment. And I stay on that assignment as faithful as I can, full of faith that God put this. I don't know why God has me doing this, but he does. I don't know why God put this in front of me, but he did. And I'll stay with it until something else, until I, I, I feel like I've been completely reassigned to this new thing. Right. Your faithfulness is not contingent on what you see. Yeah. It's on when God says, stop. You're going to be like Dr. Tom making breakfast. My dad. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, I, I was, as a teenager, I was just tired. I'd work a lot at Burger King and get tired. And he would just be so unrelenting in his giving. I, you know, pancakes? No, Dad, I don't, I don't like pancakes. You want waffle? I'll make you waffle. You want a waffle? I, I want a waffle. Again, yeah. You want oatmeal? I'll make you some oatmeal. But he was always happy about it. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, I was, Dad, I'm just gonna have a bowl of cereal. Okay. Next morning, same thing. You want wa- you want waffle? I'll make waffles. Yeah. Waffles coming. Yeah. Come on, they're hot. They're fresh. Remember, he's like, it's hot. They're fresh. He's trying to refresh he you. He's just unrelenting on his yeah. refreshing. And then yeah. finally, you go, yes, I'll have a waffle. And then he gets excited. Yeah. That little Yay, waffle going. I get to make you a waffle. And he still does it today. He said, "Come over and make you a waffle." <laughs> I'll go over there right now. I want a waffle. I want, yeah, with the best waffles. And we have to be unrelenting on our giving. Be an unrelenting person who will not you. I I will not be deterred from blessing other people. I'm going to refresh somebody. To just say it today. I'm going to refresh someone today. Wasn't Jesus that way though? Find someone that you can refresh. It's funny that around Jesus, he had people that were trying to keep him sometimes from refreshing people. Oh yeah, like blind Bartimaeus is like, oh, and people are like, hey, leave him alone. Don't bother the teacher. And He's Jesus busy. Is like, what are you doing? Bring me the 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 guy that's weary. Or I'm the kids. Refresh. Hey, we don't want the children around Jesus. He's like, what are you even? What are we even doing bring here? Bring me the children. We're we're not gonna bring children. Yeah, yeah. What, the man at the pool. Who are the, you people? The man at the pool of Bethesda. You know, he's weary. He's been there for 38 years. And what does Jesus do? Refreshes him. Gets him going again. Starts that motor back up. Gets him. Gets him back into life. And you look at Jesus's life, and I don't ever remember him at the time. He's like, hey, I'm done. I'm tired. You know what? I need a little refreshing. He, Jesus takes a spa day. He, how come Jesus never got a spa day? He should have. I'll right. tell you. I'd have, got, I'd have bought him a spa day. But you see that he had people against him. Every places he went, he had, yeah. he had obstacles. He had every reason just to be tired. What did you do today? Well, I gave and gave and gave, and I healed, and I spoke, and then we fed people, and then... And then, and then what happened? Well, then they tried to kill me. <laughs> Sounds like so a pretty I had good to day. leave. Sounds like a pretty good day. They tried to throw me off a cliff. What are you going to do tomorrow? The same thing I did today. <laughs> Go to a new region. We're all giving, 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 and then they'll try and kill me, and then I'll have to leave again. I wonder if the disciples ever sat down and goes, hey, I'm seeing a pattern here, Jesus. This is like a pattern. The strategy is really weird. <laughs> what if, Jesus, we just took a weekend off? Like, I wonder if they ever did that. They go, hey, what if we just took a weekend off? Go like, to the lake. They go down to... <laughs> Let's go, let's go on a boat ride. She's like, all right, let's do it. We're going to go heal a demon-possessed guy while we're at it and almost sink the boat in a storm. They think it's dumb. They're like, every time we take Jesus water skiing, like he never falls. He yeah. doesn't go underwater. It's so dumb. He's flipping during turns. You won't get wet. You won't get wet. <laughs> Where are we? I don't even know. I don't know. know. Anyway, live a life of giving, and we encourage you in that. 
partner with us. It really allows us to push this message out there. We're looking for partners so that we can stay on pray, uh, dot t- praytv.com. And uh, this is a big thing. It's going to start up in August. And we're looking for $134 a month partners. And if you become a $134 a month partners. Yes. Not $134. No, just $100 of them. Yeah, $34 a month. $34. And if you do it, what do you get? You get one of our t-shirts. We're going to send it to you. Right? You have to go to wakeuptv.tv, hit uh, give, but you have to hit the reoccurring. Reoccurring button. Yep. Yeah. And anyway, you want to pray over? Father, I thank you, Lord, for this message today. And Lord, you're ministering life to us. That, Lord, you're changing us, that your hand is upon us, Lord, that you're moving us in the right direction, Father God, that we are not weary. We are not weary in well-doing. Father God, we believe in you, and we know that you are going to work everything out to our good, that you have got glory in mind for us, that today we're going to be our best at what we're doing, knowing that you are doing your best behind the scenes to reward us richly. And all the places that we give and we get nothing back in return, We thank you, Father God. You are the giver in our lives. You are the rewarder. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Chat GPT Tuesday. So the Chat GPT is an artificial intelligence bot online that you can go and talk to. And crazy. (laughs) It's creepy. It is. And so we ask it to do things just to see if it can do them. What did you you ask it today? Give it ideas. Now, there's a disclaimer with this. You may not want to do this. But I said, write an angry note to my wife on why leaving the toilet seat up is better. So, and maybe you want to do this. Maybe you want to jot this down and hand it to your wife. Maybe this is going to be a good thing. Yeah. So let's let's see what G- Chad GPT's uh, recommendation for our married life is. It says, Holly, I can't believe I have to address this issue yet again, but it seems like my words haven't sunk in. So here's a brief note explaining why leaving the toilet seat up is better. Convenience. Leaving the toilet seat up is far more convenient for me. Right? It gets everything we've been talking about and any other man who uses the bathroom. We don't want to waste precious seconds and energies lifting the seat every single time we need to relieve ourselves. It's a simple <laughs> matter of efficiency. Two, equality. Why should I be burdened with the sole responsibility of putting the seat down? It's unfair to expect me to cater to your every whim when it comes to this mundane task. If you want equality go well. in our relationship, start by accepting that both of us can take the responsibility of adjusting the seat as needed. I well, like IG. Chat GPT's getting you divorced. That's what Contrary he's doing. Contrary to what you believe, leaving the seat up is actually more hygienic. It's all it's basic common sense that seems to have escaped you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he says communication. The ongoing debate about this toilet seat position is ridiculous. It's not a life altering issue, but it does highlight a lack of communication and compromise between us. If we can't find a middle ground on something as trivial as this, I worry about our ability to handle more significant challenges. Oh, my gosh. Chad <laughs> GPT needs some He's, marriage counseling. He needs to sit down. He's out of his mind. Anyway, give us ideas for Chad GPT, but watch this clip. Our designer, God, has a better idea for your life than you do. He does. We try and rethink what God has for us. We're like, oh, I don't know if God has the best life for me. Let me figure it out my own way. No, no, he's got the best life for you. You can trust God that his life is going to lead you to fulfillment and happiness and all your dreams and desires come true. But you've got to learn how to trust him. We all have to learn how to trust the directions that he gives us. Because we all wake up one morning, maybe 17, 18 years old, and we think to ourselves, I want to carve out a life for myself. I want to carve out some space on this earth. I'm getting ready to move out soon, and we start to think about the future. When we were little, it was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it didn't matter what you said. But suddenly it starts to matter. You're thinking about, well, now I'm almost grown up. What do I want to do? You start to pick a college or a career path of some sort, figuring out what you want to do, how you're going to get there. You're planning, I want to get married, maybe. Maybe you don't want to get married. Maybe you're thinking, I want to have kids. For me, I was thinking I wanted to get married and have kids. I'm going to try and build something that I want to live in. And as I build it, it's going to take me years and a ton of effort to start putting together what I might call my life. And my goal is to find happiness and fulfillment and and dreams come true, the things that God put in my heart. And as I build it, the last thing I want to happen is for it to implode, to spend 10, 15, 20 years building something to have it fall apart. That's not what I want. And that's not what God wants either. I have good news for you. Maybe you've built things that have fallen down and imploded. But we're going to go on a series right now 
And we're going to look at how to build things God's way so that they keep sustaining. Because if you have a marriage where two people begin to speak the word of God over the marriage, they begin to speak the word of God into the marriage, they begin to learn how God loved us and apply the way that he loves me. I can love my spouse the same way. And I begin to sacrificially, and they both begin to sacrificially love. And I'm not looking to my wife as my source, but I'm looking to God as my source. And so I keep giving and sowing. There's a river of life flowing out of me of love to pour into her. And same thing for her into me. What happens is this word of God is sustaining our marriage. It keeps going and it keeps growing. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and be in church this weekend. Yeah, wherever your church is. See y'all tomorrow.